So lucky you, you've got a new dog, new puppy, and now it's the name, it's the name choosing game. And uh, it's fun, it can take some time, but I'm a firm believer in the science behind things. So what I wanna do here is go over the science of why you might name a dog, how you might go about it. I mean, it's, some of it's obvious, but not all of it is. So hopefully this will be useful. All right, so let's start with, these are currently the 10 most popular names for dogs, according to the AKC. And at the end of this, there's gonna be a page I've put up that gives you the 100 most popular names and also the most popular names by breed. So that'll be at the end of the video. So hopefully you'll stick to the end and you'll see that. But I, I wanna look at these names and then we're going to kind of think about how we would name a dog and which of these names we like based on some of the signs. So first off, um, you know, this is a family decision, right? The dog may become attached to one particular member of the family, the one who takes them out for the walks or feeds her, but it's a family decision, get everybody involved, right? Then choose a name, hopefully that's fitting to the dog, you know, you know if you've got yourself a little toy poodle, then I wouldn't necessarily call it giant, right? You know, um, or if you've got a really big strapping dog, then I, I wouldn't necessarily call it tiny. I mean, you know, those, you know, but again, you could. I mean, you know, there's a certain amount of humor that goes with that. But I think more importantly is think about public consumption. Don't name your dog something like vicious or killer because you're going to use this name and you're going to use this name in public. You're out at the dog park and you're calling for your dog and you've got to count, you've got to shout out, killer! Not a good name, not a good name. So choose a name that's not gonna offend people because you're gonna use this name consistently for your dog. Okay, then choose a name that is not overly complicated. Fluffy three bangs, two hair would not be a good name. It's too long, the dog's not gonna understand it. And also hard for you to shout that out in an area where you wanna get your dog's attention. So don't choose overly complicated names. In fact, the general consensus is a name that has one or two syllables are better. A name that starts with a hard consonant and maybe ends in a vowel is easier for a dog to understand. You know, for, if you look at things like this, a name like Lucy is a good name. Uh, a name like Daisy is a good name. It's got a good, hard, fast start to it with a kind of a, a lyrical end to it. Something a little easier for a dog to understand. Remember, dogs obviously don't understand the words we're saying. They can't put words together and come up with what we're asking them to do. They learn these words based on our behavior towards them when we say these words. And so this goes in with also not to confuse names with commands. I'll give you an example of a poor ch choice of names that we have one of our dogs. We have a really beautiful Frenchy girl. Her name is Kit. Actually, her whole name is Kitsumi. But we call her Kit for short. Um, because, again, Kitsumi, Kitsumi would have been okay. The problem with the word Kit is it sounds like sit. So when we tell her to sit, sometimes she comes over to us because she thinks that we've said kit. So choose a name that's not confused with, with commands. Double barrel names, not a bad idea. My name is James Chop James Roxburgh Chopping. My middle name is Roxburgh. So I have a second name there. Most of you have second names. When somebody says James in a crowded room, man, I can pick that out even if it's really noisy and my hearing's not the best but I can pick my name out. That's the way names work. When I hear James Roxburgh chopping, that's my mother calling me because I've done something wrong. So you can give your dog a double barreled name and they'll know because they hear Molly Sue, that the addition of Sue on the end of it means that they're in trouble and they better pay attention. So not a bad idea to have a double barrel name for your dog, a name that's short that you use most of the time but another name that you associated with this when the dog has done something where you really want its attention. You're not gonna come up with the best name right away. Try some names out. See how the name reacts to the dog. Use that name for a few days. You know, see how this dog is liking that name. And when you're doing names, give, especially to start out with, when the dog pays attention to you on that name command, give the dog a treat associate its name with something fun that's gonna happen. 
So obviously there's times when the dog has misbehaved and they don't get a treatment, that happens. But the point here is, is that you want them to pay attention when their name is said because it means they need to pay attention. To start with, it means they need to pay attention because they're going to get a treat. Um, is it okay to change the name of a dog? Absolutely. There are absolutely some times that you really should be thinking about changing the name of a dog. Um, if there's been connotations with that name of bad things that happened to that dog, I would absolutely change that name. If I got a dog from the pound, I would change the dog's name. Um, if I got a dog that had come from some abusive situation, I would absolutely change the dog's name because we want to give the dog a fresh start and we don't want any connotations of that name for that dog to be associated with bad things. So change the name. If you've got a, a puppy, that name's not really been imprinted on the dog yet. So absolutely in those situations, change it. And remember, you get some documentation if it's an AKC registered pedigree dog, it's got its name up there. You can change that. There's nothing sacrosanct about that name. There's no, it's not like you and I, where we've been signing documents and got a birth certificate and all the other things that we're now, you know, 15, 20, 50 years old, and that name stuck with us. With a dog, you can change the name, and especially in a young dog. Um, and remember that a lot of these dogs, names have been given to them as a marketing thing. Well, we have a litter of puppies, we go with a theme. So we might go with a theme that might be, for instance, expensive cars. We might call a dog Porsche and Bentley and Jaguar and Lamborghini and Ferrari, right? You know, it's an association thing here with expensive things. And so, you know, there's a connotation on the marketing side of it, good or bad. There's also, it makes it a little easier for people to remember the names of the dogs because when they see those puppies again, because they're thinking about getting one, they're, oh yeah, those are the dogs with the, with the cars names. So um, in those situations, it's just a marketing ploy. And absolutely, you can change them. The same thing when you buy one from somewhere like PetSmart, which I really don't advise, but if you did, you know, I mean, those names really are not names that have been used very much. They're just, you know, so absolutely change them. Um, another time to ignore, to, to a change a dog's name, if the dog has been or starts to ignore its name, starts to get stubborn, and you say Molly, and the dog just turns around and even look at you, start using a different name. Get rid of Molly, start from fresh. Give treats, start from fresh. Your name's now Joni. All right, so let's look at these names. Which ones do I like here? Well, which ones, I think that these are all nice and short, and for that they get good marks. Uh, in, in most places, these are single, none of them are more than two syllables. Some of them are only one. And, and I especially like names that start with a hard consonant and end in a vowel. So Bella, I think, is a great name. Just in terms of a dog being able to remember that name. Some of these names obviously suit other dogs better than others. Um, you know, if you've got a little bitty Chihuahua, then Bear may not be the best of names. And if you've got a big husky dog, then Max might be a really good name. But again, that's for you to decide. And this, this video is not about trying to tell you what names you should choose, but more telling you where the science is behind what names you might choose and why they, why they may be a good or a bad idea. Okay, so that's it. Now comes a list of the 100 most favorite names and uh, favorite names by breed. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye. <laughs>